So here's a logo I created to promote a summer movie and music festival. You can see in the name that it is a CMYK file and right up here under document setup, you can see that it was set to inches. So with it being inches and CMYK, you can tell that this was a file that was intended to be printed. But what if you needed to create web-based promotional materials like banners or export the logo for use on a website or the entire poster to be used online? Not creating a PDF for it to be printed or uploaded to the website to be downloaded, but maybe exporting the entire thing out as an image that would appear on the website. So in addition to exporting out the individual piece of art, like these icons for movies or music or the logo itself, in Illustrator, you have the ability to create artwork one time for print and save out the same file in the way it needs to be for web. So creating it one time and being able to change the color and resolution and units of measurement that you're using in your file so that the artwork that you export for use online or any screen will be compliant with the specs that they require. So in this tutorial, I'll show you how you can change your unit of measure between print and web projects. But first, how would you like a free cheat sheet? I thought so. Head over to graphicsgirl.com to get your free Illustrator cheat sheet that will show you all the shortcuts in the program. Even learning a few shortcuts will save you so much time and make you look so much more professional. Just click the link below. Hello Creative! It's your Graphics Girl of GraphicsGirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S. Girl with no I and three R's. And I'm here to help you design your brand. Because this file was set up to be printed, its color modality is CMYK. The first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and change that color. You can do that overall globally for your document under File, Document, Color Mode. And here you can change it from CMYK to RGB, red, green, blue. You will notice that it will change some aspects of your overall design. The colors become a little bit intensified, if you will, because you're viewing the project from a screen. So as you see it on your screen is more or less how it will appear to the end user. Of course, colors vary from monitor to monitor. I happen to be on a Mac. You might be seeing this and it might look too dark on a PC, but nonetheless, uh, here it was before I changed it. I'll do Commander Control Z. You can see right up here, it's back to being CMYK. I'll go ahead and redo my color conversion. You see the difference? So be mindful of that. You may need to go in and tweak some things here and there if it's not consistent with the way you wanted your artwork to appear. In this case, I might wanna go in and change the gradient on some of these. Here I am in my layers panel. I have aspects that I've put on their own layer. So here I put some stars and glow. Perhaps I'd want to reduce the intensity of these, maybe just drop them back just a little bit in their transparency, right? So however you want to tweak your file, just know that you may need to do that when you're converting from CMYK to RGB. But in addition to color, the other thing that you're going to need is to change your file's overall dimensions. So you are exporting your artwork to the file size and dimensions that they need for the output device. For example, you might be exporting just the logo for a website. You would select that, put it on its own artboard, and then you could save out just that image for the web. And I can show you how to do that, but initially I'll go ahead and save out this entire image for the web. So you're providing graphics to be in the size that they need them to be and have allocated for on the website. To do that, you'll come right up here to Document Setup. Under Document Setup, you can see that it was set to inches. So for it to be on the web, which one would it be? Well, points are equivalent to pixels. 
So if you happen to choose points, you're fine. But in general, font sizes are measured in terms of points. You know, 72 point type equals one inch, for example. Pikas were a way of measuring printed projects primarily for multi-page use, like newspapers, magazines, and you'll still see a small p after a number uh, for those traditional publishers. Inches, millimeters, and centimeters are all used for printed projects. Many times I'll be provided die lines for packaging in millimeters or centimeters because they might be coming from offshore resources and I'll keep them in their metric because that's how they need them to be. But if you're doing work for the web, you'll need this one, pixels. Pixels are the dimensions of screens and now with high resolution monitors, the size of your artwork can be larger and larger. So if I wanted to know how large this file is, my overall artboard here of my flyer, I could choose my artboard tool. With my artboard tool selected now, in the contextual menu at the top, it tells you that it's 792 pixels wide by 1,224 pixels high. So you would check with your developer of the site to ensure Will this suffice? Last thing, you'll want to know what file format do they want this file to be in. In short, images such as photos are saved out as JPEGs and everything else can be either a GIF or the preferred PNG file format. For a list of all the graphic file formats and their uses, grab my free cheat sheet right up here. Assume now that they've told you that the specs are in line with what they need, you have the right color modality, so it's the final step. You'll come to File, and it's right here under Export. You'll choose Export As. And here, from the Format drop-down, you can see you have quite a few different file formats you could choose from, and the one that we're gonna go with is PNG. And here's the last step. You wanna make sure that you check use artboards. This will export out only what's inside the artboard. For example, I'll go ahead and hit cancel for a second. In my layers, I had the elements originally bleed off the edge of the page so that when it was printed, the printer had some leeway in where they were going to cut the poster. Just for your visual purposes here, I put a little layer on there just to hide that out, but imagine that I didn't have that. It would cut it off at the edge of the artboard. It wouldn't extend it beyond that if when you go to export, you choose use artboard. So here we are. It will generally take the same file name that you have, your original AI file. You can feel free to rename it if you like, and it will give it that PNG extension. Last step, when you choose export, it's gonna ask you, what resolution would you like this to be? You have some options. If it's 72 PPI, that will be the lowest screen resolution you, you could output for, medium or high. So you might ask yourself, why do they give you the option to export a high resolution PNG? You might have another screen resource, maybe a large projection television or um, a PowerPoint deck that you don't care about its overall file size, but you want the imagery to be good, yet you want it to be a PNG. You have some options here. So a safe bet is to go with medium. Side note, when I create images for my Instagram account, I'm at graphics girl, graphics with P, H, and S, girl with three R's on Instagram. I save it out as medium, 150 PPI. And then the other thing here is background color. If you were exporting out a logo, for example, like this one that is white, you can't have a white background, obviously, because then the entire background would be white. And in this case, you wouldn't even see the logo, right? So here's where you have the option of choosing transparent to have a see-through background. I've done that in another video, but I'll go ahead and show it to you here as well if you'd like to see it after this. For this though, because our background is solid, I have artwork going down, filling it in, I will choose white. So when you click OK, voila! You can see right here that it put my PNG file in the same folder as my native AI. So if you have one artboard and you want to export out your image, 
You don't need to click on use artboards, but in this case I did because it keeps a nice clean edge. Without it, it might save all of this other stuff. I always choose use artboards even if I have one, but I tell you what, it's really nice when you do have multiple artboards in your artwork because then you can choose to export all of the artboards out as the same file type and mass. So in the case of when you're doing banner ads, I'll open up the templates here. If I were to do file export as, I could choose use artboards and it would save out all of these different banner sizes at one time. So that's how you can convert artwork that was originally intended to be printed for the web by changing its color, file format, and units of measure in Illustrator. You thought I forgot about what I promised you, huh? If you wanna see how I could save out just this logo for the web, given that it's white, here's a bonus segment for you. In my layers panel, I happen to have put the logo on its own layer. So I can go ahead and hide all my other layers here. It might look like my logo went away, but when I show it in wire view, you can see that I have it right there. Not sure if I had these original bursts with my file, but I'll keep it for now, it's fine. So here's my logo. Generally, you'll want to crop your canvas just around your logo. When you export out your PNG, you don't want all of this negative space. So if I take my artboard tool right here, I can change my bounding box to completely surround the logo. Here, I'll go ahead and extend it so I'm not cropping off any of the logo. I'll go ahead and show the, my preview again. It looks like I don't have anything, but here you go. If you go File, Export, Export As, I could choose Use Artboard one more time, and maybe I'll just call this one underscore logo. When I choose Export, here is where I would say Transparent. Now you can kind of see the logo there and the checkerboard background represents that it would be see-through. So when you click OK, voila! But you might want to see how that turned out, so I'll go ahead and pan over to an area that's all dark. I'll go ahead and I'll place that same image that we just exported out, that movie music logo file. I'll hit place. And then when I click down, and place it one time, voila! If I were to change the background to a color and put it behind with Command or Control, left bracket, you can see there is no halo around a PNG file format. And you can put it on any colored background. You can do this. Okay. Okay? So if you found this video helpful, give it a like. Hey! Share it with your friends and please subscribe to my channel. Woo! And don't forget, for free marketing, branding, and design resources, head over to graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with P H and S, girl with no I and three R's. And I'm here to help you design your brand.